I'm Ted Jantz, and this is Real Adventure with Tomahawk. All the catches you see on the show are in Suriname. All the gear we use on the show is only available at Tomahawk. Tomahawk supports catch and release. In this real adventure, the team will fly to the Amur Indian village of Apetina. The village is about a one hour flight away from the capital of Paramaribo and looking through the window offers a spectacular view. Landing at Apatina is a challenge as it's one of the most difficult airstrips in Suriname. There are only a handful of pilots who are allowed to land at this airstrip. Ted immediately gets welcomed by old friends from his days as a flight mechanic. Hey, I just landed on this little grassy airstrip along the beautiful, amazing Tapanahuni River in the middle of the most pristine rainforest in the world, right in the middle of Suriname. And these are the Wayana people. This is their living area and we're going to spend 10 days with them and they're going to show us how to fish hunt and how to live in the jungle. My name is Ted Jens and this is Real Adventure with Tomahawk. In his younger years, Ted volunteered with MEF Mission Aviation Services and assisted with their work with peoples of the interior. Through these experiences, he has developed lifelong friendships. These planes are small, but they can hold a lot. <laughs> 400 kilos, that's a lot of weight for a little plane like this. This is the most important thing. You got more of a Hi. So, Ronnie is our boss here. He's uh, the guy who's taking care of us while we're here. He organized everything for us. And uh, Ronnie is a good friend of mine. I've known him ever since I'm young. He's the be best hunter. <laughs> we got lost in the jungle once. Amorobung Mitagi one lazy will last in our jungle. Amorobu Uku man. Yeah. Ma Amano Uku, Amano Onti. He doesn't fish, he doesn't hunt. Everybody hunts and fishes for him. So. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> the crew have finished unloading and the planes take off, leaving the real adventure team at the hands of Ronnie and his men. A short hike to the river, load the canoes, and then it's off to the village. The crew have now expanded with the additional boatsmen. With over 400 kilos of gear, every hand is needed to carry the luggage over hills and through treacherous rapids. This will be extremely challenging. Not to forget, Ted will carry his own personal baggage. The famous blue tackle box. Oh, not getting any lighter. Uh, on this trip, we're going to be spending a lot of time on the river and staying in the village. Uh, Apatina is a beautiful village and the Wayana people are expert hunters, they're expert fishermen. Uh, they've lived here for centuries and um, they just, they know every little nook and cranny. They know what the fish do, where they're at, what they're eating, what they're not eating and we're going to try and fish along with them. So we have four expert fishermen, of course, with us as boatsmen. So we're going to be going up creeks and doing a lot of stuff on this trip. With a full load of gear, 
the boats have to be packed perfectly to assure a perfect balance. Ronnie's years of experience allows him to carefully place luggage based on weight. Before heading out to fish, the Real Adventure team will first have to meet the Grand Chief and ask him for permission to fish these waters. Uh, uh, the adventure has started. I can feel it already, you know. This is just great to be on the river. Just came from the airstrip there and uh, we're heading to the village. We're gonna go visit the captain and the Grand Chief. Uh, that's tradition. It's customary to do that. Uh, because you're coming into their territory. They're good friends of mine, and you know, before you do anything else, friends always come first. Just around the river bend, the grass huts can be seen on the horizon, with campfire smoke rising in the air. Children run to greet the new arrivals, and the village of Apatina comes to life. Apatina is a village in the southeastern jungle area of Surinama, along the Tapanahoni River. The village consists of a large population of Wayana Indians. Existing tribal warfare in Brazil compelled many Wayanas to seek increased chances of survival in neighboring Guyana and Surinama. The tribe members traveled from the Baru River in northern Brazil, over the Tumacumac mountain ridge on the southern border of Surinama, into the Palamuri River, and finally setting up close to 70 small camps along the Tapanahoni River. Chief Kananu Apatina and his family of three wives and five children established the small camp settlement, Parawime, by the Tapanahoni River in an effort to more easily facilitate trade with the Maroon tribes. This was later renamed to Apatina by the missionary pilots who referred to the village by the name of the Chief Kananu Apatina. During the 1960s, missionaries have settled in the village adopting the Western culture and religion of Christianity. Although many of the Wayana people wear Western clothing, still many of the traditional customs of the Wayana people remain the same. The daily weaving of hammocks, whittling of crafts, cooking of cassava, and creation of handmade jewelry, the rich culture of the Wayana tribe filters through the changes of the 21st century. With the development of the open bodice hole, Kananu Apetina, in October 2006, children are able to go to school daily. The village is very much intact, rich with life and culture, and the surroundings offer picturesque views throughout the day. Ronnie has already prepared a hut for the crew members. Boasting incredible views of the river, the crew is happy to stay here. This is our view. Uh, we have a beachside cabin, as you can see. Everything takes place right in front of our face here, uh, but this is an amazing view. Look at the rocks, the water, the sky. That's our kitchen over there. I'm gonna go set up a hammock, and, uh, and then later on this evening, we're gonna, early evening, early, late afternoon, sorry, early evening, we're actually gonna go out and just test the waters and see if there's some fish that might want to bite on our very first day here at Apatina. Ah, you know, the, these huts are made with uh, natural products. Everything's natural, trees and these leaves, these are called tassi. These are special little like palm plants that grow on the side of uh, hills. And they, you know, you can't find them everywhere. They're all the way in the jungle. But it's so cool to come under this roof here. I mean, the sun is really hot, and you come in here, it's like 10 degrees cooler. It's amazing. 
even our floor is made of wood. You don't want to lose anything in there. Uh, Before going to greet the Grand Chief, Ted ties his hammock and glambu as mosquitoes and insects are very active at certain parts of the day. This is a mosquito net. You need to have these when you're out in the jungle, you know, there's just insects. It's not mosquitoes, it's just insects, you know, sometimes. Actually, you don't have a whole lot of problem when it's, once it's dark. It's, in this, it's usually when the sun goes down when you get them. And then uh, you want to be protected. But also in the middle of the night, early in the morning, like 1 o'clock in the morning, that's when mosquitoes again start to become aggressive. <laughs> We're going to uh, go to the Grand Chief of the Wayana tribe and uh, say hello to him, let him know we're here. Uh, it's a tradition here to always greet the, the chief and uh, it's polite and he's our friend and friends come first. Okay. Yeah. So, Grandma, Ara, Po, Mi Briti, Fusi, you Bakat today. You sabi suma namito, Ted. I, I, Ted and the crew introduce themselves to the Grandma. Ronnie explains to Ted that the Gramang has become ill. Walking is difficult, so the Grand Chief lays in his hammock. Ted promises not to keep any fish for himself, but to give back to the Wayana people. I will go to Uku, make film, and I will go to the Fabi Kisi Fisi. Yeah? Yeah. I will go to Fisi, go to Oso. I Kisi, then I will go to Roni, I will go to Desma. So, wow. And if I Kisi Furu, I will go to Ted promises not to keep any fish for himself, but to give back to the Wayana people. Ted offers a prayer and gives the Grand Chief his best wishes. Uh, Lord be with this village and all the people that are in it, that your spirit will be uh, with these people, O oh Lord, and in your name. Okay. Ted sets up the rest of his gear and will fish the remainder of the day to find out what the fish here are biting on. I use Shimano, reels, and also dialer reels, both. The very first lure that I always use when I'm going fishing for Anyamata. It's not that I don't trust other lures, but there's one lure that always works 100%. And that is, guess what, the search book. We're gonna head on out, and we'll go out for like about an hour or so. Uh, we'll run across uh, any, you know, peacock bass and also the wolf fish, Anyamata. This combination is so lightweight, yet really, really, really good. I go. Ah, yep. Ipok. Yeah. Yeah, I'm go kunoto. After receiving the blessing from the Grand Chief, Ted and his team travel down river to a nearby rapid to find out what the fish are biting on now.
The water is at its lowest offering. In some places, immaculate fishing conditions, but in others, absolutely nothing. It was about 20 years ago, 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, that I fished down here with Ronnie, and I was using uh, natural bait, and just down behind these rocks back here, we were catching this one after the other, wolf fish, big ones. We'll see what happens now, 20 years later. This is no tomahawk. Yeah. Tomahawk Abbey. The aging of time has not affected the areas around Apatina. The area is teeming with life, and the jungle awakens you with its beautiful Amazon surround sound. Ted tries several different potential spots where fish could be hiding. Every rock and corner of the river offers a new perspective. Beautiful waterfalls and rapids creating gorgeous sandbanks behind them are a vital source of food and nutrients for several animals. Fishing in an area like this is a one-of-a-kind experience. Finally, Ted gets the catch he was waiting for. The cameraman rushes to catch the action. Okay! He got back! Now let me get this down here. Alright, right, boy. Pretty. First catch, first day, little peacock bass right out of the rapids. The frog. Definitely tells you whether there's a peacock bass here or not. <laughs> and he's a feisty one. He's a feisty one. But pretty. Look at that coloration. This is only a couple of pounds. But still, nice fish to have in the, in the pot. Now this fish, I have to tell you, I'm a catch and release guy, but we're with the local people this time. We're not on our own. We have our own food with us. But they live off of the fish. And You're watching Real Adventure with Tomahawk. The crew has just landed, met the Grand Chief, and Ted has caught his first catch. Little peacock bass right out of the rapids. The crew arrive after dark and get started right away preparing the night's dinner. Ted offers his personal commentary on this amazing five-star menu. Okay. Well, looks pretty good he's got rice He makes here. sure he has enough food and piles it on. Everybody eats rice in this country. Rice, rice, and more rice. So, if you like rice, come to Suriname. Yeah, we got a little of everything in here. Peas and carrots and smoked sausage and smoked chicken. Dinner. Yeah. That's bush food. You at the same time. Multitasking. Filled with the amazing bush food, Ted sets out to the village to find Ronnie and the boatsman. Because of the low water level, Ted wants their input on the best areas to catch fish. Ronnie's there over there. Just a some wrinkle. He's got like all the houses here. Tell me, go for Takitori, for Tamara. 
Ted discusses with the boatsmen where they feel the best fishing opportunities are. Sawedu is with Antindeja. Yeah. Tamara. Tamara na Dondada. Freda. Satara. Sunday. We'll go ku. Ala presi ja we we sri bija to. Yeah. Uku. Fun of Tamara. Yeah, for not tomorrow. Yeah. And you must touch this sort of crazy boom that Kogolu could have been. Johan and Ronnie offer Ted their input on where they feel the best opportunities would be. They decide to go upriver and explore the area around the Gandafutu Rapids. And traffic is dead up here Yeah, and you might. The jungle awakens, and morning mist welcomes in a new day. The villagers head to the river for morning activities. We are cooking breakfast here. I'm not Master Chef, you know, I'm not going to be going there on, what's that name of that program? Uh, Master Chef, yeah. <laughs> But when the bush comes to you, you know, and you got to cook in the bush, hey, everything tastes good. So we've got eggs. I did some bacon a little earlier here. Look at that. Check that out. Bacon, eggs, and uh, we have some bread that we brought along. We have coffee. That's all you need. And we have Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> First day out, first morning, we're gonna go up river and uh, we're gonna just uh, yeah, go up to the rapids called the Granda Futu Rapids. We might go on top of those rapids and see what we can find in that area. There's Anumara, there's a fish called Paku, there's uh, all kinds of uh, Tukunari, peacock bass. So uh, we're gonna have a good day. We'll stay up there for uh, most of the day and then uh, come back later this afternoon and then in the early evening, just before sundown, we'll go back out again. It's gonna be a great day and I'm ready for it. The boat ride to Gandafutu is about an hour upriver. Notice from around the corner the amazing granite monolith, Tebu Top, can be seen towering 340 meters over the jungle. Tebu Top boasts an adventurous climbing experience. Made it. At the top, the mountain offers a 360 degree view of the surrounding area. Also seen is the even higher Roosevelt Peak, which also offers incredible views from the top. On the peak, unique orchids can be found that are indigenous to that altitude. In the distance, the Gandafutu Rapids can be seen. arrived at the what they call the Granda Futu Rapids. Translated that means the Great Foot, Giant Foot Rapids. They're really big. We just came up a whole bunch of a little series of rapids and it just continues on up. And there's like two or three different levels of this rapids and we're gonna walk up, start fishing on the other side of these rocks and then work our way back today. There's 
everything here. Anumata, peacock, bass, kubi, uh, there's paku, there's all, I mean, it's just full of fish. Piranha, of course, so we'll see what happens. This is Real Adventure with Tomahawk. The Tapanahoni River is filled with stingray and eels. Especially during the dry season, sand and rocks are exposed and these painful fish lurk not too far from where it looks good to walk. One wrong step could mean a terrible accident. I'm going to try a brand new lure I've never tried before. Uh, it's by Sevel. And uh, it's kind of like a spinner with a little baby fish trailing behind. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna first see how that thing works, what it looks like. Let me first cast it real short and see what kind of action it has. Oh yeah, it's just a crankbait, basically. That'll interest, looks like it would interest a peacock bass and also a uh, Anyamata. Let's see what happens. These are piranha teeth. Check this out. This is piranha. And these are piranha teeth. Look at that, that was a pretty good sized piranha. <laughs> yeah. Just casting across this rapid where the water goes down and trying to get some interest in whatever is running up and down the rapids. Interesting lure, did get a couple of strikes, but that was it. So I'm gonna, just to make sure I'm starting to catch stuff, let me get back to the frog and see what's there. Ted spots one of the boatsmen named Cornelius fishing in a very traditional manner and decides to check it out. Survival is the name of the game. You live here and you have to eat. And this is uh, where you gotta get your food from. The local people, the Wayana people are expert fishermen, but they don't only fish in traditional ways. They don't just use a line and, and a rod and a reel. In fact, very seldom do they use that. They use other skills. They dive and they get down under the water with their diving goggles and they see fish and they got this little harpoon that they use a lot of times they make it themselves even a little bow and arrow underwater bow and arrow and they'll go after the anumata they'll go after any fish they can find and shoot it which is an amazing skill and guess what today they actually picked out some really nice looking fish let's check it out look what they fish with you know there's a bow and arrow isn't that amazing 
They make an arrow just out of a piece of steel. The barb on the front here, two barbs. And they go underwater and shoot that. It's got, just got a little line tied to it. So that's one traditional harpoon. And then of course, they become more modern and they get a little more powerful harpoons. But what's the catch? If you've got to live here, you know, and you don't have any other choice, you've got to fish every way possible. And this is what they catch. This is Wada Wada. This is a fish that sucks onto the rocks and just sits there flat. You don't catch this on a line and hook, but they love it. They make a soup out of it, you know, and they eat it. It's really, really good. It's Wada Wada. And every now and then they run across not just Wada Wada, but an Anyumara. Sumashu Dizzy. Nanga, big one. So the big harpoon there, he shot this Anyumara. This is what we're trying to catch on line too. So, amazing. Abunyera. Huh? Okay. I'm gonna try down here now, bottom of the rapids. It looks really good. Actually, this whole area looks great, but uh, you know, you've got to hunt. This is fish hunting, and uh, that's what we're doing. over here and get started from that side. Yeah. Then you can yip me though. Okay, well, <laughs> first fish of the day and smallest fish of the day. We're gonna try for some more. Uh huh. They're there. I, I didn't get them. So I'll have to throw it back in there. Yeah. This is. Oh, Lusu. This is a bad boy. They're taking it, but they're not hitting it really hard, you know, so they're not getting enough. I'm not getting enough leverage to set the hook properly. But they're here. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
I'm getting all these strikes, um, but it's just, you know, it's just a crankbait, and I'm going as slow as I can with it just to make sure, you know, that they're hitting it. But I'm not able to get them on, on the hook. So I'm gonna try a different bait. I mean, they wanna eat. They're there and they're hungry and they're excited about this lure. Of course they are because it's uh, searchable. But for some reason or other, they're just not hitting it as hard as they should. Now, I think we After have have hours of fishing, Ted realizes that the Gandafutu Rapids are being too affected by the low tide. With only a handful of strikes, Ted is still anticipating the catches he hopes to encounter. We're checking all the mouths of the creeks here, and uh, that's been the best, uh, our best luck so far. <laughs> been a rough day, but still a beautiful day. It's a beautiful place, and this is only the first day of many, so I've got confidence we're going to do some good stuff. The crew heads back to camp and will have to find new areas that offer better fishing than their amazing views. Ronnie mentions to Ted that in low water, the Pimba Creek would be a place to try. The crew decides to rest off and try again in the morning. You're watching Real Adventure with Tomahawk. The crew has faced unforeseen low water conditions that have made fish hunting tough. They will now embark towards the Pimba Creek. It's another new day and we're heading out downstream this time. We went upstream yesterday and uh, saw some beautiful places. Didn't catch a whole lot, but got some strikes. Now we're going downstream. We're going to check out a creek down there and uh, some of the river. Getting the boat down is quick. Later on today when we get back home, we got to go up those rapids and that's going to be a little bit of a chore. So. <laughs> Make the oil give me. The crew make their way to Pimba Creek, which they are hoping offers a better fishing experience. The creek is narrow with plenty of rocks, a prime environment for wolf fish. Beautiful rapids. Oh man, all the rocks here. There has to be Anyamata and other fish in here. Oh, there's got to be. Little boy. Oh. 
picking one. Getting fish out of the creek is still proving to be a struggle. We're heading back down now. We're just going to uh, get past these rapids and then we're just going to coast along, no motor, and I'm going to fish both sides on the, on the way back. Right back there, right on the edge, right there, that's where he was. And of course, when they hit right there, you see all that shrubs there? You gotta keep him out of that. If he would have gone in there, I would have lost him anyways. So I had to, got a, I got one there, piranha, beating, beating. <laughs> Ted still manages a piranha catch, a small but feisty fellow. Oh, they're getting that loose. Okay, they got it loose. They got a piranha. We can use that for bait. Uh, we're going to do some natural, you know, natural uh, bait here. At least. I'm getting some strikes and some hits now. It's in the afternoon. Maybe that has to do with it. Like say, Eddie. While Ted was out fish hunting, Johan threw out a line to try his luck. What he caught was not something he was looking forward to meet. The Tapanahoni River's silent killer, the electric eel. From underwater, the shocks produced can be heard. The eel can produce shocks up to 860 volts at two millisecond intervals. Uh, Johan caught a electric eel, and now we're trying to figure out how we're going to get uh, the line off of him without uh, getting the charge out of it. I'll jump on you. The crew now faces the daunting task of removing the hook from the eel without having to kill the eel. You want a player? A player, I'll be Robert Yetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The team successfully manages to save the eel without anyone having to meet its electrifying personality close up. Ted finally gets the strike animata. he was hunting for. Chima. Small animata. No, peacock, 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 tukunari. Ronnie go nyangbaka. Mm hmm. Ticking. Sorry. This is a little peacock bass out of the creek. Very nice, very nice, beautiful. There we go, but they're really pretty, huh? Nice coloration. Small, but beautiful. Very pretty. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back out there. No, no, no. I think you know, Broco. That's the one that. Let's get a picture of this air one. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is another one that's losing its coloration. It's changing its, uh, uh, you know, it's getting a different age in its life. It's going to have new spots pretty soon. So, but that's uh, female. So far, we've been catching a lot of females. Peacock bass. On the way down river in search of better fishing locations, the crew stops at a small village. It is respectful as an outsider to visit the captains of the village along the way. This is uh, called Tutukampu. And this is a little camp of a captain who's got his own little, you could say like a little village down, uh, down river from Apatina, but he's a captain also of Apatina. So we're just gonna stop by and just say hi to him and then head on further down. <laughs> this is Captain Sami and this is his village or his little, yeah. Or you can call it a village, uh, Tutu Campo. Oh, this is the way they live, you know, you have little camps like this. This is the way it used to be for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. These people lived in small settlements like this along such a beautiful river and a beautiful setting. Ted explores Tutu Campo a little more to show us some of the many interesting things around the village. This is uh, cassava, a root, it's bitter cassava, it's got poison in it. And they're going to rasp it in this machine. So when he's done rasping it, that cassava goes, is put in here into this thing. It's called a matapi. And then they put a pole in here and they press this down to get all the poison out of the cassava because you can't have that poison in there it'll kill you if you want to uh, if you get somebody you don't like very much you say hey look have a cherry and they put it in their mouth uh, and they burn their mouth because it looks like a cherry so you go making okay so he's doing this when he catches fish, he's going to use it to cook the fish with, and it'll taste good. All right, so in other words, we're going to catch fish. Let's go, all right. The crew continue downstream in search of a campsite amidst suitable fishing conditions. We're looking for our campsite, and I think we might have found it. This is such a beautiful spot. Really, really, really nice. We got a lot of fishing uh, possibilities all the way around us here. I mean, just off this island. It's amazing. This is a big rapid. Just, you know, look at, look at how beautiful it is. And we've just got so much possibilities around us here. Oh, man. Yeah, I think this is it. The only problem is the shade. We don't have a lot of shade, so we're going to have to make shade. We'll have to use our tarps for that. 
but uh, this is it. Construction of the new campsite starts by clearing brush and reinforcing branches to each other for hammocks. However, some crew members prefer a comfortable camping tent. Okay, we got a nice shady spot here. And, oh man, Johan, Pego, Kono, Sana DC. Peering. Peering, he says it's piranha. Oh man, this is piranha. Oh boy, still hot. This is. Mm. Oh, good. Full of bones, but good. Mmm. Mmm. Farm. Oh, that's hot. Mmm. And I can have pepper. This is pepper. I mean, super pepper. The location is beautiful, offering prime spots for a strike. The crew will take the afternoon to explore and fish the waters surrounding camp to find out what's there. Unexpectedly, Ted gets a monster strike. You want? Yeah. I'm that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> That's a beautiful bass. This one weighs how many? Five, six. Let's see. All right. Assess pond. Three kilo. Beautiful. Place we're at, too. Real quick. Then I got to get back to fishing. Beautiful coloration. Right here, the mouth of the creek. Nice peacock bass. Huh? Boy. Am I happy? The crew heads back to Hapatina, but the adventure is far from over. As the crew will pack up and camp out in the river and experience nature firsthand. Stay tuned as more adventure awaits on this Apatina adventure. <laughs>